our service for this second Sunday after the Epiphany. For those with us in person, you can follow everything in our service in your bulletins. And for those with us online, we have links for you to follow along as well. And so for those of us who are here, please stand and let us sing together Hymn 616. Hymn 616.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Continue now with the college for purity. <coughs> Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are known, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit. We may perfectly love thee, worthily magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> our Lord Jesus Christ saith, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that thy people, illumined by thy word and sacraments, to shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. 
saying, Jesus Christ our Lord, who with me and the Holy Spirit liveth and reigneth, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Listen to me, O coastlands. Pay attention, you peoples from far away. The Lord called me before I was born. While I was in my mother's womb, he named me. He made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me a polished arrow. In his quiver, he hid me away. And he said to me, you are my servant, Israel in whom I will be glorified. But I said, I have labored, labored in vain. I have spent my strength for nothing and vanity. Yet surely my cause is with the Lord and my reward with my God. And now the Lord says, who formed me in the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob back to him and that Israel might be gathered to him. For I am honored in the sight of the Lord and my God has become my strength. He says, it is too light a thing that you should be my servant to raise up the tribes of Jacob and to, re and to restore the survivors of Israel. I will give you as a light to the nations that my salvation may reach the end of the earth. Thus says the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel and his Holy One, to one deeply despised, abhorred by the nations, the slave of rulers. Kings shall see and stand up princes, and they shall prostrate themselves because of the Lord, who is faithful, the Holy One of Israel, who has chosen you. The word of the Lord. I'll say Psalm 40 responsibly. I waited patiently upon the Lord. He stooped to me and heard my cry. He lifted the eyes out of the out of the mire and clay. He set my feet upon my high bed and made my head and shoulder. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many shall see and stand in awe and put their trust in the Lord. And every day they trust us in the Lord. They do not resort to evil spirits or turn to false gods. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Although I have been given no intelligence, but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. For an offering and sin offering, you have not required. And so I said, Behold, oh, I In the roll of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaim righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I have not restrained my lips, and the battle of the Lord you know. Your righteousness have I not hidden in my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your deliverance. I have not concealed your love and faithfulness from the great congregation. You are the Lord. Do not withhold your compassion from me. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Paul, Paul the Dan Apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and our brother Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints together with all those who in every place Call on the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lord and ours. Praise to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given to you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to thee, O Lord. John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason that he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descend from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard him say this. And they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher. Where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying. And they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah, which is translated anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. There's a show, Leverage, which is basically a kind of heist show, and there's five characters, four of who are reformed criminals, and one who's a former insurance agent. And they go around righting wrongs, basically helping people who have been victimized by the rich and powerful who've gotten away with their crimes. One of these episodes, Nate, the insurance agent, former insurance agent, who acts as the mastermind of the group, is struggling. He's struggling to have a life outside of their work, outside of the team. And so Hardison, the group's hacker, decides to reconnect Nate 
with a man called Hurley, who's a former client of theirs. And he does this so Nate can see the good impact that they've had on others, that he can see how Hurley's life has changed for the better. Now, unfortunately, Hurley has once again got himself inadvertently into a little bit of trouble. He finds himself being chased by the Irish mob. So he and Nate together go to a church basement to hide out there. And so two of the mobsters come up on this church, and one of them, named Liam, wants to go after Nate and Hurley, thinking he saw them duck into this church. But the other one, Connor, refuses because this building is a church. Now, when Liam says that he thinks he might have seen them go down into the basement, Connor chastises him, saying, you know, okay, so the church itself is holy, basement not so much, and then the ground under that is holy. Well, Liam then tries to argue, saying, well, there are a lot of non-church groups that meet in the basement, like the Boy Scouts. They're not a religious organization. So Connor then goes into the Boy Scouts wall and goes through the entire thing ending with a statement about how a Boy Scout is required to be reverent, to show reverence. And as he does this, he points out the Boy Scouts, while not a religious organization, are not entirely secular. And then either way, he's not going into that building. <laughs> now, Liam stops after this and wonders, how it is that Connor knows the Boy Scouts' law. Connor turns and replies to him, we all had dreams once. <laughs> so even Connor, who has fallen into the life of a gangster, recognizes the holiness of church building. And while he's willing to hurt and to even kill Nate and Hurley, he's unwilling to do something profane in something sacred. Now, the sense of holiness doesn't derive from the building of the church itself. It comes from what the building represents, the dwelling place of God. This brings us to what we see in our gospel this morning. As the disciples of John the Baptist who were following Jesus, Andrew and his companion with him, they seek the dwelling place of the Lord. Raymond Brown, in his commentary on this passage, reminds us in their search for Jesus' love. That our desire as humans is to stay, or to dwell, even to abide with God. So that's what this passage is pointing us to, our greater desire to be with God. And John the Baptist's disciples find themselves doing so in this way. They first hear John the Baptist recalling the events we celebrated last week, the baptism of our Lord by John the Baptist himself in the River Jordan. He recalls that miraculous event, the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus. And he begins to tell others about this. He begins to proclaim who it is that Jesus truly is. He begins to 
tell everyone, his disciples included, this Jesus that they see. He is the Lamb of God, the Son of God, even. So Andrew and his fellow companion, his fellow disciple, go and follow Jesus. But that's all they do. They don't speak to Jesus. They don't ask him anything. They simply follow. It is Jesus who reaches out and talks to them first. <clears throat> Jesus asks them this question. What are you looking for? The very same question God asked us. And it's then that Andrew and his companion ask Jesus where it is that he's staying, where it is that he is remaining dwelling, where it is that he is currently living. And Jesus says response to them is also one of invitation. He responds with the words, come and see. Like Andrew and his fellow disciple, we too are seeking after God. We want to know where God dwells so that we can go there so that we can be there with our Lord. We see this desire throughout all Scripture. We see it in our readings today. As we begin our post-Epiphany journey through the beginning of Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, we see Paul is trying to help prepare the Corinthians, for the day in which our Lord Jesus Christ will be present, the day of the Lord's coming. Their desire, these Corinthians, is to be present with God. And Paul's desire is to help ready them for that opportunity. Our psalm today, which is one of the psalms of David, is bookended with this idea of waiting for the Lord. One of the things David even asked, he asked God that God not withhold his compassion from David, from David himself. In the midst of this, the core of what we see in the psalm is David describing what God has done for him, as well as all that worship of the Lord entails. Yet in that, his chief desire, the beginning and at the end, is that he might be closer God. And just as Jesus is the first in making his move with John's disciples and their desire to seek him out, so too our Lord makes the first move with Israel. In our reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, it is God is crying out to Israel, crying out to Jacob as we hear. Jacob, of course, being one of the patriarchs in the Tanakh, the Old Testament. And we hear his story specifically in the book of Genesis. And it is Jacob who is renamed by God to be Israel. So when we speak of Jacob, we are speaking also of Israel country, the place, the people, God's chosen people. And in this passage in Isaiah, 
prophet is speaking of God's desire to once again be with the Israelites. God's desire ultimately that Israel might be gathered back to the Lord. And this is all said in the context of Israel's exile from the land that God had promised them. So God, in the midst of their exile, is providing hope, hope for the future, hope for their return to God, and then taking that and transforming it to God's using Israel to be a lantern to bring all in the world to our Lord. We see this ground, this place that we worship in, as holy because it represents where God dwells. It represents the place that we want to be in, the place where we can be present with our Lord. God seeks us too. God is the one who reaches out to us first. God is the one who reaches out when we are still too shy or even nervous to ask. We desire to be present with God. And God desires to dwell with us as well. So don't be shy or hesitant in reaching out to God, because God reached out to you first. Don't let yourself be found waiting outside the door, feeling unworthy to come in. God has done the work to make you whole, to make you worthy, because we could not do that work ourselves. And just as much as you desire to be with God, God desires to be with you too, in a way that is even greater than we can ever imagine. So let that happen. Allow yourself to follow God to wherever it is that our Lord can be found. Answer God's call to come and see. Now please stand as you are able, and let us profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one word, Jesus Christ, the only God, the Son of God. God of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God. 
God. We got not made it. He and one of us was his father. Why do we all things are made? He for our sin and for our salvation. He now from heaven. He was the one who brought the Holy Ghost to the Virgin Mary. He was the same man. And was crucified also for the rest of the conscious pilot. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures. And the second is God. And sit upon the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory, to judge the earth and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who stayed away the office. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge and baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life in the world to come. Amen. Kneeling, let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church and the world. Almighty and ever living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplication and to give thanks for all men. Receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, <clears throat> Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, Trey, our priest, as well as Francis, Bishop of Rome, Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, and all other denominational leaders, that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government, government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, Josh, our governor, John, our mayor, and all our local elected officials, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hands in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy holy creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Alexandra, Isabella, Linda, Liz, Shauna, Tammy, Christine, Maisie, Patty, Maddie, Rich, Andrew, Tom, Fresco family, Phil and Sue, Ike, Claire, Gloria, Sharon, John and Pat, Laura and Luis, Logan, JJ, Jennifer, Brittany, Debbie, Kaizen, Fayun, Ron, Frank, Victor, Fran, Liza, Lee, Joan, Ken, Marie, Ed, Susie, Art, Harriet, Jim, Barbara, Veronica, Amy, Rhonda, Robbie, Rihanna, Kate, Sharon, Laura, Barb, Lou, Anna, Amelia, Jerry, Michelle, Susie, Becky, Tara, Paula, Alma, Pamela, Dawn M, Layla, Tony, Key and Tina Sloan, Ted, George, Tony, David, Tom, Jerry, Trudy, Jack, Evelyn, Marie.
Maria, Matthew, Tina, Brenda, Sharon, Todd, Liz, Elizabeth, Lee, Gary. And all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating birthdays this week, Isabella and Matthew. We give thanks and pray for those celebrating anniversaries this week. We pray for the children, teens, and college students of this parish, and for those serving in the military. We pray for the life and witness of our companion parish, St. Mark AME Zion Church Newtown and St. Paul Levittown. Lord, look graciously on thy church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a rector for this parish, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for thy people and equip us for our ministries. We offer up any other prayers at this time, whether aloud or in our hearts. We pray for Bishop Frank And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed in this life in thy faith and fear, especially Fran Peterson and Anthony and Rita Corey, for whom altar flowers have been given, and Christian martyrs throughout the world, beseeching me to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Joseph, her most holy spouse, Luke, our patron and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Taking a moment of silence for reflection, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge that you have our manifold sins of weakness, which we from time to time most previously have committed, by God or greed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us, we who are in the repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Remember to send a previous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, my special Father, the God Son of our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve the heaven and seek the union of his life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden. And I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This is a true saying worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. As any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only but for the sins of the whole world. 
And now please stand as you are able. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And by the Spirit, please show one another a sign of peace. And peace to those who are with us online as well. You may be seated. Well, all the announcements can be found in the back of your bulletin, so I ask that you look at those at your leisure. Uh, the uh, update on the parish, the, the, the Pipers and the parish house, uh, is mostly part, part of it's what I mentioned last week with the organization. And thanks again to our choir for helping with that. Um, but it's mostly just about the insurance um, and just the next steps ahead. So nothing to worry about, but more details about what's going on. Today, um, after this service, um, at roughly 11.15, uh, we are going to have a Christian formation session. And it'll be very quick, very brief, uh, about 15, 20 minutes, just a Q&A on our worship here. And the idea for that is to see what questions you have uh, for the next coming weeks. So next week after our service, we uh, will have training for everyone currently and everyone who wishes to volunteer to help read or usher. So this will be a refresher for those who've done this with us for a long time. And this will be a chance for those who want to join in those ministries uh, to do so. So that will be one way that we see how our worship is. And then on the last Sunday this month, two weeks from now, We'll have an overview after the service of the different parts of our worship together, of, of the Eucharistic service. So um, your questions today will help frame uh, both of those things. Uh, so next week, again, I do hope if you want to be a reader usher, a reader intercessor, uh, do whatever it is that we need to have help with for our services, that you'll be present for that. If you can't be there for it, um, we will uh, have it available on Zoom um, online. Uh, and we'll also have a recording of it as well. So if you can't be here in person for that, please watch it later. Uh, for today, just as a reminder to those on Zoom, uh, we won't have the Q&A as part of our Facebook Live but we will continue to have it as part of our Zoom. So if you wish to stick around, please do on Zoom. And if you have questions, uh, please type those in at the chat when we get started uh, so I can look at that and, and see what those are and then hopefully answer those questions you may have. Um, with all of that said, we are still looking for volunteers for many different things. Um, we can always use more readers and intercessors and ushers, readers. Uh, we are still very much looking for um, Sunday school teachers who can help us build that program back up uh, from the ground up. Uh, we're also still looking for digital disciples to help with our online ministries and our recording our services. We're also looking for people who can help give rides to folks to church. So uh, I've been told uh, as a church, we, we tend to like to be uh, invited to do things. Uh, well, consider this your invitation uh, because you know, I, I don't know all the gifts that you may have. Our lay leadership may not know all the gifts that you have, uh, but you do. Um, so stop and think about where your gifts lie, what God may be calling you to do. And uh, we've got contact information to reach out to um, about these individual ministries. So again, think on that, reflect on that. Um, if you feel God calling you one direction or another, talk to those people about that. 
Um, tomorrow, of course, is Martin Luther King uh, Day. I hope all of you um, have a good celebration of that day and everything that um, Dr. King's ministry in this world meant for us. So uh, I know when I was doing AmeriCorps, it was a day of volunteer work. So uh, that's always a wonderful way to spend your time. And at the very least, uh, go online, take a cop, get a copy of um, Dr. King's letter from the Birmingham jail and remember what this day is really about. As we continue with our service now, uh, please don't forget at the end of our service to sign in if you haven't done so already. You know our offertory plate is in the back there as well. Uh, and know for those who are with us online, we have an online giving option for you now as well. Uh, all baptized Christians are warmly invited to receive communion. Uh, and if you need it, we have gluten-free wafers, just ask. Uh, if for any reason you wish not to receive, but still wish to come to the altar, just simply cross your arms, that will be a sign to me that you would like a blessing instead. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs>
Our service now continues with Eucharistic Prayer 1. Please stand at your table. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We Suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered, full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue, perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. When the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he prayed. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, the remission of sins. This is off to each other. You remember this. Amen. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. We most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness to safe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine. That we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. 
We earnestly desire that Father again is mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. For some of the beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy church may obtain remission of our sins and all the benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee. Possibly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we with him. And although we are worthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounded duty and service, weighing our merits, pardoning our offenses, through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Hallelujah, Christ, our Passover once for all is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith.
Our service continues with the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and heavenly God, we must heartily thank thee that thou hast given us in these holy mysteries to preserve the food of the most precious body of God, that thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and thus assure us thereby that thy favoring witness towards us, and that we are very members of our great, in the midst of the body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs to hope with thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech you, Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and the laws of the verse that has prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom we be the Holy Ghost, be all honor and glory, forever without end. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. And the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord shine the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you this day and always. Amen. Uh, again, uh, if you wish to stay for the Q&A afterwards, uh, please just stay in the name for the time being. Let us stand and sing together Hymn 494. M four ninety one.
Thanks be to God.